What a game we've just witnessed again at the Kassam Stadium. Oxford have had another crazy game in front of their home fans, but we'll get to all that in a second because this was the game where Oxford United fans, Oxford United as a whole, said goodbye, celebrated the life and mourned the tragic passing of Joey Beecham, which happened last weekend. Brilliant tributes by Oxford United fans all the way through the week. A brilliant um, display by the fans in the stadium today. A lovely service put on by Oxford United before the game. And a lot of respect for the Cambridge fans who and the players who, you know, as a delay kickoff and all that stuff, who very much respected the day as well. So thank you very much for that. I, I will just say a couple of words on Jimmy Beecham after this video. It, there's a timestamp down below if you want to jump straight to that. But we've got a game of football to talk about first. And as I said, very emotionally charged Kassam Stadium. A fantastic turnout from the Oxford United fans. And, you know, they came to see their side play and they came to see their side get a very... A very easy, routine, celebratory march to victory. But Cambridge were having none of it. Cambridge were having absolutely none of it. And quite honestly, Oxford United just don't do routine, run-of-the-mill games, do they? Certainly not in home games, that's for sure. This was another topsy-turvy one, which could have gone either way. But Oxford finished up on the right side of it to give Joey Beecham a warm, great send-off. It finished Oxford United 4, Cambridge United 2. And it was Cambridge who very quickly silenced the feel-good factor inside the Kassam Stadium with who became the pantomime villain of the day, Sam Smith getting his first of two goals. Really caught the Oxford defence um, very, very cold. A changed lineup from what we've done away from home. We, were, we had done three at the back in the last two away games. We went back to almost like a 4-4-2, but you can going to say it's a four diamond two in there so we were a little bit more exposed at the back in this one certainly with Elliot Moore being out as well he's a big loss to the back line hopefully he's not out too soon but it it was a sloppy one um Sam Smith stayed on side um where Oxford sort of thought that maybe he was offside but he didn't and it was a very good finish past Jack Stevens really and it really caught Oxford United cold but yeah he didn't do himself any favours by celebrating and goading the Oxford United fans. And look, um, he didn't have a very good lo a loan spell here. He was he was poor when he came here on loan. Fans gave him a bit of stick. He's already um, scored goals against us in the uh, uh, what is it EFL Trophy earlier on in the season, the Pizza World Championships, as I like to call it. And he's having a great season for Cambridge United, and he scored a couple of great goals today this was the first one but read the room Sam come on you don't do that you didn't need to do that you didn't need to stir up that hornet's nest you didn't need to celebrate in front of the Oxford fans on today of all days you could have literally just had a bit of dignity and walked away but it is what it is Cambridge were one nil up and it was a very very frustrating period for Oxford United where Cambridge sat very deep, very organised, but certainly can play some good football and certainly a good on the counter-attack because they did create chances in behind Oxford a number of times today and could have found themselves 2-0 up. Oxford were a little bit erratic, trying desperately to get back into the game, get that equalising goal. We've seen that from Oxford before where they're a little bit loose when chasing a game and can often be suspect of giving away a second goal. Uh, but it felt like it was going to be one of those frustrating afternoons where everything just wasn't going to work and uh, passes were going behind people or we were trying the Hollywood ball in behind because Ch Cambridge were sitting off us and giving us two, giving us space in midfield, but no real space up front. And it needed something, um, some quality really to unlock it. And Ryan Williams was that guy who unlocked that defence and he was brilliant all afternoon today. And he he is the guy that provided a bit of spark for the first goal. Is a great ball, like... Pass side football from the right hand side. He was playing right back today, um, Ryan Williams. What a versatile player he is. Great side football cross into the box, which Sam Baldock uh, luckily dummies. I'm not sure he did it intentionally. And that ran all the way through to Matty Taylor, who made a great run. And it was a simple finish for him. Very fitting. Taylor was captain for the day. Very fitting for Matty T to get the goal. Um, all the goal scores are very fitting for Oxford United. Uh, but Oxford lad getting the goal. He's in great form. And uh, one of our own and all that jazz, just like Joey Beecham was. And we were at 1-1. And that's the way it stayed at the at the halftime mark. And we're just sort of hoping, OK, we, we've ridden the herd lurdy doors 
Um, we can go in, we can regroup, we can come out, and hopefully we can make this nice and comfortable, at least for the second half. Nope. 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 We can't. We can't do comfortable. We can't do comfortable at the Kassam Stadium. And again, we give away a sucker punch of a goal. This reminded me of ones that Bolton scored. It reminded me ones that Portsmouth scored um, in second halves of games. But it's particularly the, ball, the Bolton one, because this one came from um, Oxford's corner, really. A couple of recycled phases of play. And then very quickly, Cambridge got the ball forward. They got the ball into Sam Smith again, who got in behind. And this was a great finish. Um, great finish down into the bottom corner. I do have a couple of question marks over Jack Stevens for that one. I thought he could have done a little bit better. I thought he got hand to it, should have been able to save it. But saying that, um, that was Smith's second goal. Very, two very well taken goals, as I said. And this time, he um, was by the Cambridge fans, so he ran over to them to celebrate. So that, that was rather... Glad you turned that way rather than celebrating for the Oxford fans. But this one, again, left Oxford in a bit of a bind. We are all kind of just thinking, oh my God, is it going to be... A one where the emotion has overshadowed the game and we're going to come away with zero points um, on the game where we all thought it would be, not a formality, but should have been a win. A while against Portsmouth, we had to wait right to the end of the game to get back into it and the frustration grew. The frustration wasn't really there this time. Oxford were a lot more patient uh, chasing this equaliser the second time around and we got it relatively quickly. Uh, I actually <laughs> didn't think Baldock was having a great game. Um, but he certainly was excellent in the second half and he proved um, pivotal in this one, providing the assist for a ball across the box to Cameron Brannigan, who was there, who last season would have blazed this over the Oxford Mail Jim Smith stand. But this time it's a different Cam Brannigan, isn't it? And he rolled it very comfortably into the bottom corner for a back to 2 2. Again, not an Oxford homegrown guy, but. You have to say Cam Brannigan bleed yellow and blue um, through his veins at the moment. And we're back to 2-2 two -two and uh, we're pressing for that winner. It looked like Smith was going to get his hat-trick in this one with a, a good header while he was stumbling backwards, which enabled Stevens to save. And then at the other end, Matty Taylor hit a good shot, which was a good save by the Cambridge keeper out for a corner. So it's a little bit end-to-end, -end, but Oxford then did get that third goal, did go ahead in the game. Good work again down the right-hand side from Sykes and from Ryan Williams, who worked tirelessly, but it was Sykes's cross across the box, which Sam Williams got in front of the defender for a simple finish, but a striker's finish. And there we see the benefit of having the two strikers up front, which is something that we never really saw for Carl Robinson for many, many years. We've just started to see it now, and there is the the fruits of playing those formations with two guys up front is you have got two quality players poaching around the penalty area instead of just one. And let's not forget Sam Baldock as well. Um, Oxford guy, Oxford United fan, has even watched Joey Beecham growing up as well. So another fitting goal scorer for the day. And yes, you know, it was a tired, not really too nervous. I wouldn't say Oxford didn't have too many problems seeing the game out. I'd say Oxford were pretty much in control, but... You're always a little bit nervous when you've only got one goal lead that you might get sucker punched into something. But I think they did the job really well. Marcus Brown even came on as well. So it, was a, it became a very cel celebratory game at the end for Oxford United. He came on. He looked good, actually, as well. But you're wincing every time he goes into a challenge. But Oxford did get the fourth goal in this game. And again, it was another fine breakaway move. I think it was, again, they moved the ball well down the right-hand side. And it was a cross across the box. Again, Cameron Brennigan arrived with a pretty simple finish to make it 4-2 for Oxford United. Everybody could relax then. Everybody could settle down. The points were settled. We cut three wins in a row, five wins out of seven in the month of February. So it looked a tough month at the start. We had a little wobble midway through, but that is an excellent return for Oxford United. And we, we sit fourth in the table, right in the hunt for, although automatic may seem out of the question, we're right in the hunt for those playoffs. And although you can point to some frailties at the back, which just aren't going to go away, you cannot question that Oxford are bloody entertaining going forward. So many options, so much movement. Think of the players that didn't play today. And I'm including like Brown in that because um, he didn't really feature. But you've still got Henry, you've still got Brown, you've still got Bowden, you've still got Holland. What a squad of attacking players we've got. Marcus McGuane, Sam Winnell, 
Looking pretty good, isn't it? Looking if we keep injury free, we're looking pretty good. Um, so fingers crossed. We we got a tough game on Tuesday night against Pompey, but this was a tough game emotionally, and you could see that that took a lot out of Carl Robinson this week. Um, and I think he's done an amazing job getting the result against Crew, which was a battle, and having another ding dong of a battle at home here. And coming out on the end of it. And credit to him, credit to the players, credit to the fans. It, it's an, it's it was an emotional day with an exciting game of football and an exciting win for Oxford United, and we're all going to enjoy it. We move on to Pompey on Tuesday night. Cambridge fans, put your comments down below as well. I actually thought you played really well, and I'm surprised you sit in such a kind of low block formation. And I know you're good on the counter attack, but I actually think you could play a bit higher up and cause teams a few more problems. I think you've got some bloody good footballers in your team. Um, and when you played football, you really caused lots of problems today. So I'm surprised you actually did sit back so much. But maybe that was because you know Oxford have a bit of a harder time when a team isn't so open. So let me know your comments down below, Cambridge fans and Oxford fans. And... Uh, just before I round this up, I'm just going to give a few little words on Joey Beecham. So this is a hard thing to talk about, and I think other people do such a better job of it than me. And I've heard the words that Carl Robinson said in an interview about Beecham was fantastic. The eulogy that Peter Rhodes-Brown gave on the pitch today was wonderful. So, you know, I, I feel that they do a much better job of that sort of thing. But one thing that Robinson said that really ran true to me was when he said that Joey Beecham playing for Oxford, that was like playing for his England. And that really stuck with me. And I think that was a very um, true comment. Uh, I think you forget that. that when The whole thing of him going to West Ham was not because he wanted to go, certainly didn't want to end up at Swindon. But it was because Oxford United needed the money. Playing for Oxford United was the be-all and end-all for Joey Beecham. That's all he wanted to do. If Oxford got into a higher league, got into the Premier League, yes, the England stuff may have come from that. But he was always, always just delighted to play for Oxford United and pull on that yellow shirt as he did nearly 500 times, scoring 80 goals in the process. And uh, yeah, he's a player that, definitely, definitely made meant a lot to me um, growing up. And I don't think it's beyond the realms to say a bit of a boyhood hero. And it was really sad, beyond sad, to hear that he died. When you support a football club, those players that you know or become attached to when you first start supporting them, they have a bit, a bit more than... They're a bit more than just like the players, if you know. They are, they are heroes. They are legends in your own mind. They are iconic figures to the football club. I felt very sad when Mickey Lewis passed away because he was just such a an iconic guy, iconic player for when I first started supporting Oxford United. But not to belittle Mickey Lewis, but Joey Beecham takes that up like another notch and then so. He was such an exciting player to what I don't think we've ever produced a more exciting player than Joey Beecham. I'd be hard pressed to say there's ones that have come close, but just as a as a young boy going up to watch Oxford United, it was just a joy to watch him play. He got everybody on the edge of their seat. I know it was standing, but there were a few seats at the Manor Ground. Everybody was on the edge of whatever it was. He was such a special talent, uh, such a, a wonderful player for the club. And I, that people have showed a lot of his goals and a lot of them go kind of push to the back of your memory but that Blackpool one I have such a vivid memory of that goal I was in the beach road seats uh, with my dad and it, and I said we've talked about the importance of the game and how much of a tight game it was and that with such a great view of that ball just coming out of the sky and beach and controlling it and volleying it and just producing this goal out of absolutely nothing and I think if anything else that goal that bit of magic that bit of genius just summed up exactly what kind of footballer he was and yeah it, it is emotional it is quite tearing up it, it is a sad one and um if anything else the the players put on a great show for him today and the fans showed their love for him today and um before i shed a tear 
I'll just say thanks for watching. Hit subscribe. Um, comment below. Give your favourite beaching moment. See you soon.